doorway. Herbert Lom played the police commissioner in another comedy, The Pink Panther. He's a great classic actor. He played the mafia boss in The Pope Must Die. We asked him why he was attracted to the role. I was making a movie in Rome. Uh, I was making a horror movie. And when I read a comedy script, I thought it might make a nice change to what I did in Rome. Uh, my first reaction was that I laughed, and that's always good. They used to do the same thing when they used to send me the Pink Panther script. When I laughed, it was all right. Then I gave it to my children to read, and they laughed too. Right. So that's a good omen. Where are the hearts? Well, he didn't have one, Mr. Torelli. So we made them into a pie. Which pie killed my daughter? This one. Yeah, and this one drove the car. That's fine. You gonna eat them? Start with the driver. So we'd have to do extraordinary things like drop fishes on Balthazar and get his bottom and um, stand around being violent and making people into pies and doing scenes with Herbert Lom, which is very enjoyable because uh, he's always been a, a hero of mine. I'm playing uh, Cardinal Rocco. It's a wonderful character. He's such a slime ball. But I was concerned about what my sisters in Boston Mass would think. You know, you don't talk about the Pope or you don't knock the Vatican with my Italian family. So I told Peter, I says, I'm a little, you know. But then I realized God loves laughter, you know. It's, it's okay. And I got, you know, being a slime bag, my character, I asked for absolution at the end. So I sort of rationalized it was okay. I didn't want to go to the next world with a clean soul. Papa, how are you? You look terrific. God, you're the best pope we've ever had. Rome is all yours. You got everything you want. So, how about this place? Pretty mind-blowing, isn't it? I take it you're in charge of the Vatican finances. Huh? Somebody's got to do it. So, what sort of state are the church's finances in? Well, who wants to know? I play the Monsignor who's... Uh scheming all the time. I don't know whether people will be scandalized by it or whether it will be just an uproarious comedy because it does have a serious content at the same time that it's very funny. And I'm sure some people will be offended by it. Uh, I can't imagine that most people won't be rolling in the aisles. Uh, and for some people it'll be food for thought. <laughs> I've come here to Westminster Cathedral to get the official view of the Catholic Church. I'm going to be speaking to Mr. Nicholas Coote, Assistant General Secretary to the Catholic Bishops. First of all, let me ask you, what's your response to the film itself? Well, Catholics do have a sense of humour, and they can laugh about themselves. It's really a bit like family jokes. They say the best jokes about Jews are told by Jews. And when outsiders tell jokes about you, you sometimes feel a bit upset. So I can understand that some Catholics might well feel that to represent the Vatican as composed almost exclusively of crooks and buffoons and idiots um, will be felt as a bit sore and rather laughing at rather than laughing with. From Mr. Coote's rather moderate views, we looked at the grassroots. We found that those views tended to be a little bit more abrasive. Well, if people are going to carry on doing things like this against the Catholic Church, then people have to be taught lessons and people will get hurt. Uh, when you're saying that, yeah, no, I mean... No, listen to me. People will get hurt. I don't quite follow people what People will get hurt. Is are that, you coming in? Because uh, we're just starting. Was, is that like a veiled threat no, to the makers of the film? I've got to go in the studio and stuff like that. So listen, God bless. All the best. Bye. Thank you very much, Father. When I tried to talk to the stars of the film before the premiere this time, strangely, they weren't so keen. Paul Bartel had suddenly decided to fly to Moscow. 
Mr. Bartel, would you confirm or deny that you've had any contact with any Italian-Americans within the last few days? Uh, I have lots of Italian-American friends, and Italian friends, too. I went to school in Italy. They're all very upset about this picture. When I was given the script, it was called The Pope Must Fly. I thought it was some sort of theological aviation picture. You know, the Pope flying. It sounded very inspirational. But it turned out to be quite different. The Pope Must... I don't even want to say it. Uh, I'm sure it's very funny. I'm sure it's wonderful, but I, uh, I really have to get away now. And you would confirm that you're going to Moscow? Moscow? No. Brazil. I'm going to Brazil. Thank you. Mr. Bartel, thank you. American film star Alex Rocker plays Cardinal Rocco in the film. Against the wishes of the New York City police, he has agreed to speak to us over the telephone and he's, and he's there now. Hello, are you there? Yeah. Hi, is this Jules? Yep. Uh, yeah, this is Rocco. Uh, I have to make this quick because the, the police and my attorneys and solicitors, uh, they told me not to talk to anybody over there. But anyway, I was really surprised as anyone when I saw the finished film. I never realized it was about the Pope. I mean, I, hey, I was born Catholic, you know what I mean? I would have never done this. They fooled me, that, that dumb director there, Peter Richardson. I mean, he, he told me the script was the dope must die, not the Pope must die. I mean, they must have got some actor and revoice or dub, whatever the hell you call it, substituting the, the word, you know, dope for Pope. I mean, I was really cheated here. Um, I, I believe there have been attempts on your life since making the film. Oh, hell no. I, you know, that's media exaggeration, all hype. But look, pianos fall out of 43rd floor windows every day in New York. It missed me by inches. <laughs> it, was, it was almost a foot. But, uh, you know, it's bad luck. It happens. And as for torching my apartment, burning it up, I mean, things happen. And, and that stuff, you know, my dog being branded with triple sixes, I, it must have been the kids. They're high-spirited. Uh, listen, I, I really have to go. Uh, we didn't talk, okay? I think there's a FedEx script at my door. Thank you very much for talking to us, uh, uh, Alex. That's very kind of you, and uh, I hope you'll... The reason why England's in trouble, you know? I mean, people like Peter Richardson, I mean, I, I, I don't ever mention my name, Rocco, to anybody there. Sure, sure. Uh, but now it has to be said, we've been looking for Peter Richardson all day. We, we, we went into an edit suite, he wasn't there. Um, I mean, he seemed a very elusive man. I, I, I hope we can get through to him. And, uh, Good luck, he's a nutcase. Boy. <laughs> Keep him away from me. Okay, then. Well, thanks very much for talking to you. Okay. Thank you. The main protagonist in this film is, of course, Robbie Coltrane, the great actor. At the moment, he is in this rather snazzy West End hotel, surrounded by very tight security. Um, but his agent has said we can have a few words with him. Um, you've played in a lot of films, obviously. What, what made you decide to uh, take on the role of, of the Pope? No, I'm sorry. Um, you, you've been in a lot of films. You've, you've uh, done a lot of leading uh, roles. What made you decide that you would take on uh, the role of, as the Pope in this film? Uh, well, I didn't, love. Um, the... Um <laughs> there was a suggestion at one time that I was going to play the Pope, because I, I have a, a Pope bearing, if you will, a, a king-like presence, for which I dreadfully overpaid. And um, there was a suggestion at one time, but frankly, they couldn't afford me. And they went off to Yugoslavia or Romania or one of those dreadful, I mean, God bless them, they've been through a lot of countries, and made it for nothing, which... Um, Naturally, I, I was not keen to do. They, they did cast what they called a Robbie Cochrane look-alike. Oh. And I'll be, honest, I'll be honest with you, I was rather insulted at their choice because it shows a rather overweight Scottish person to oh. do it. <laughs> I don't remember there ever being a rather overweight Scottish Pope. So you say that it's not you in the film? No, of course not. It has to be said, Mr. Cochrane, a lot of people would say that that was you in the film. A lot of people would, yes. And they'd, and they'd, and they'd be very, very wrong indeed. Very wrong. Have you ever worked with Mr. Peter Richardson, the film director? I believe in my early days I had something to do with the, the comic set. The, um, young people who did skits and so on, and they wanted something... They wanted something to add some gravitas to their somewhat undergraduate ramblings. Well, and I was drawn in for one or two, but to, to suggest I'm part of a group <laughs> is, is a trifle naive, Mr. Holland, forgive me. Forgive well, me for saying so. Mr. Coltrane, I'm sorry, but it, it's, I don't think I, we can honestly be, be expected to believe that it isn't you in the film. I think we should have a look at a clip, if we may. And I, I, I'm afraid I'm, I'm convinced it is you. Let's have a look at that clip. Oh, dear, dear. We want you to be completely relaxed and comfortable at all times. Oh, that's very kind. Well, what's that here? I 
afraid you have to pick somebody who's in charge. Oh, that's you. Talk all you want. I'll be right out here. No, no, Father, um, I don't even know if you're the right guy to be talking to, but I've been told at the conclave elected me Pope, and it's the word of God and so on, but obviously there's been a terrible mistake. There's been no mistake. You are the supreme pontiff. And if I see so much as a foot of this stuff in the television, you're a dead man. Come, Brandy! <laughs> It's a part I'm playing. Uh, um, we're doing Macbeth, and I've been practicing the, the thing they do so well, don't they, up there? <laughs> Mr. Coltrane, thank you very much. Bless you. Bless you. After a considerable amount of research, we've uh, tracked Peter Richardson down to this address uh, in uh, a seedy part of the West End of London. Hello? Hello? Well, look, Peter Richardson. Hey, it's good, isn't it? Yes, that's what's going on here. What, are you making a film, are you? Yes, we are, yeah. Yes, How are you doing? Nice to see you. What's oh, this bad thing. news film, is it? Who? Bad news film. Spider Web, you remember me? A party last night. We'll clean up for those who are coming, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Peter Richardson lives here, then? Uh, yeah. Well, no, he's not here at the moment. Uh, where um, is he, then? He's sort of upstairs, you see. And, um, yeah. well, about, um, um, oh, a couple of weeks ago, he went off with my girlfriend, you know, because they're very good friends. What? No, no. So stole her away from me? Hmm? Stole her away from me? No. No, no. No, he just took off with my girlfriend and uh, said, you know, because they're very good friends and they explained to me they were going, he's got to go abroad, you see, to do his film with her. Yeah. And uh, he's left him with a £2,000 phone bill. <laughs> well, what film was he, what, what was he going to do then? Um, uh, something in Barbados, I think, you know, it's about killing the Pope or something, you know. The Pope must die? That's the one, yeah, yeah, shoot the Pope. No, that, that, that film's out, but millions of people have seen it, it's, it's out in the cinemas at, at the moment. No, he's gone off to do this film, the Killing the Pope one. Um, in Barbados, and I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to do. I'm going to do all the music for it. No, the, the film, the, the, the Pope Must Die, is finished, and it was shot on location in uh, Yugoslavia. And the music has already been done by Anne Dudley and Jeff Beck. They finished. The, the mm. film's out. People are seeing it. It's in the cinema. Yeah, I'm doing it? the. Um, so I've got this kit. Up, so I've got this kit set upstairs. It's like a really big, um, a massive Ferguson kit. I'm, I've had designed to do the soundtrack for the film. Mm -hmm. For this Pope film, which uh, he's asked me to do the music for, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all this it's like a no, whole concept to like a two hour kind of percussion rhythm thing. I'm gonna do. No, the, the whole film thing is finished. Now. It's out now. It's out. There's no more music to do for it. Uh, Jeff Beck mm -hmm. and Dudley, they've done the music for it, and but I'm doing the music for the film. No, it's been done already. The, mu the film is finished. That film is finished. It's done. He's completed it. It's in the cinemas now. There is no music to do for it. That's a bit of bummer, isn't it? to track down Peter Richardson. All of the people involved who I've talked to have been evasive, to say the least. I leave you, the viewer, to draw your own conclusions. I'm afraid I couldn't quite see the comedy in it. It's stupid. Well, it's only a film, isn't it? Well, I mean... Uh... It's just a joke, isn't it? Isn't it? You better come home, speedy going silent Away from Cannery Road We stop a haul of your drinking with that blues it ain't blow Come on home to your adobe And slap some mud in that wall The roof is blinking like a trainer There's loads of roaches in the hall Who's being on the island? Why don't you come home? Being on the island How come you leave me on the alone? Shopping downtown for my mother, she needs some tortillas and cheap. 
Oh, that's 